Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here today. We had just had a discussion on the budget, um, which I think it's fair to characterize as productive and collegial. Um, we are, there are a number of issues that we are working through. There's some questions about the Medicaid package. There are some questions about the education package. But we are committed to uh, working through these issues one at a time. The staffs have been working for some time. Um, and uh, we're optimistic that we can get the budget done on time, which would be uh, very good on a number of levels. Uh, for sure, I'm confident saying the people of the state of New York are going to get a good budget this year, and a budget that's going to serve the state, and a budget that's going to change the trajectory of the state. And I think we'll have a lot to celebrate about, because we have a, you look at the blueprint that's on the table, it's a fundamentally different vision for this state. So I'm excited about that. Um, again, the conversations were good, but you have to remember, you know, we've had, we've been working on the relationships and we've been working collegially since January. So uh, these meetings, these discussions are actually uh, nothing new. They've been going on for several months now. And I think it's fair to say on everyone's behalf, we've worked at developing the relationships uh, and that that's, uh, serves the best interest of the people of the state of New York. With that, let me turn it over to the Senate leader, please, Senator Skelos. Thank you very much, uh, Governor, and it's wonderful to have all five of us uh, in the room. And uh, I believe that um, this coming week and working with the, uh, the speaker and, and uh, the minority leaders that we can close down, as I uh, probably mentioned yesterday, four or five of the uh, uh, conference committees uh, that are working today. And I think that will be a, the first step uh, that's necessary and positive in terms of getting that momentum uh, to conclude the budget. So again, I, I thank you, Governor, for having us here today and uh, look forward to a on time as or early budget, as I said yesterday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Speaker. I just want to repeat what I said yesterday. I want to thank the governor for the leadership he's providing in setting an atmosphere here of uh, sitting and listening to the various views and trying to bring about and forge compromise on a budget uh, that we hope will be, uh, yes, early, uh, but certainly on time and reflect the divergent views of the various elected officials uh, across the state. Uh, I am delighted to participate, as are my members, and I would hope that uh, early next week we can close down uh, and begin the momentum toward a final close down of this budget. So, again, thank you, Governor. <laughs> thank you very much, Governor. I just want to commend you for your leadership, especially for the invitation. Uh, this morning, and, and all my colleagues and the leaders, uh, we're, we're looking to uh, have a, uh, not only a uh, on-time budget, but it has to be a good budget. Uh, there's a couple of issues that, that stand out to me with respect to uh, the budget. Uh, one dealing with uh, the educational uh, formula or aid uh, going to Yonkers. Uh, there was a substantial cuts to Yonkers, and also the regional councils, because at the end of the day, I think the people who stayed in New York not only want an on-time and a good budget, but what has to come out of that is uh, jobs, especially for our upstate communities and throughout uh, New York State. So, Governor, I want to commend you uh, for the direction uh, that you're putting uh, New York State uh, back on the right track, and I look forward to uh, be supportive in those endeavors and some of those hot burning issues we can deal with hopefully during the budget or after the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, certainly, uh, I think the meeting we just had was very productive and uh, I think was a clear uh, question and answers as far as uh, the outstanding issues uh, that we're facing here to, to close down. Uh, but certainly, I think that uh, we are moving in the right direction and uh, hopefully that we can and will get a budget done on time. It's a difficult year. Uh, there's difficult choices and decisions that are still yet to be made. Uh, but certainly I think the communication lines are very much open in five different ways. And I think that's a positive uh, step for all of our conferences and all the constituents that uh, we represent in this state. So I'm looking forward to our continued dialogue and working together 
And uh, I'm very optimistic as well that this will continue and to bring a, a, a budget to a successful conclusion and an on-time conclusion. I'd like to, uh, again, thank Governor Cuomo uh, for pulling the meeting together today and uh, having us all get together and um, have a good meeting. So thank you very much. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Any questions? Governor, where you're at on reform piece of your Medicaid plan, do you think that the if there's any way to get that through the legislature? We have we submitted the Medicaid Reform Task Force Plan to the legislature, and that's uh, our proposal, and that's our position, and that's what uh, we hope passes. So do you, uh, but you've had now two conversations with the, the leaders over this. So do you, do you think that there, that there's some version of that that can be supported by, by everyone? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Governor, the, uh, the Senate's bill includes a, a last-in, first-out reform package. Do you support that, and do you see that as being part of the final budget package? I support working through those issues, you know, the last-in, first-out issue, primarily in New York City, uh, short-term, in the entire state, long-term. I support moving to a performance education system. I support moving towards a teacher evaluation system, a school district evaluation system so we can actually start to stress performance statewide. To do that, we need objective evaluation criteria. The Board of Regents is working on that. I called on them to accelerate that. Long term, that's the direction we have to move. Short term, New York City says they have an immediate problem. Because of fiscal pressures, they're going to have to lay off teachers, and they want to make sure they lay, lay off teachers that do the least damage to the education system. We all understand that. That is a short-term issue that deals with an existing uh, agreement that was collectively bargained. Um, and I look forward to working with the mayor and the Senate uh, and the labor unions involved to see how we can be of assistance both short-term and long-term. Yeah, it's part of the budget negotiation? Well, it is as a matter of time, it is now, right? The mayor's point is you look at the calendar, you look at when he has to do the layoffs, uh, it's over the next couple of months that happens to be coincident of the time of the budget discussion. But they are two separate issues. Governor, both the legislative budgets include some restorations to your proposed school aid cuts. Do you accept the premise that the restoration of some of those cuts? I'm sorry, Jimmy, can you say that again? Um, do you accept the premise there should be restoration to the amount of your proposed school aid cuts? Both houses included some restoration to that. You know, my position was the education aid uh, that I put forth in the budget was what I thought we should do for Education Aid. Senate now says this is what they think they should do. The Assembly says this is what we think we should do. So you have three different proposals on Education Aid. But do you accept your premise that there should be some restoration? Are you willing to provide for some restoration either with the additional revenue we found? Or well, do I accept their premise? I don't accept their premise. I accept my premise, which is my education distribution was the right one. Now, the question is, uh, are you saying, am I open to negotiating with them? Yes. It's different than accepting their premise. Governor, one thing why certain things weren't included in this budget process that were included in others, like red regulation or even mandate relief, which would require more funding, is it because it's too controversial to hold up the process? Well, you know, budgets, what goes into a budget? That is the question. Should be a book and then a movie. What goes into a budget are two things. One, specific issues that are germane to the budget. Two, issues that are coincident with the budget and which you're looking to resolve and you really use the budget as a vehicle to get them done. For example, the uh, rent issue and the property tax cap. Um, my position is I would like to see them done in the budget. Now you could say, well, they're not really budget issues, property tax cap probably more so, uh, but they are going on at the same time. I think they're relevant. I think they're connected. I'd like to see them done in the budget. If they're not done in the budget, can you do them after the budget? Certainly you could. My preference would be to see them done in the budget. Governor, with respect to mandate relief, um, how does that play into the budget right now? What's in there now? And what's going forward on mandate relief? What work is left to be done? After April 1st. The, uh, what, is, what we now have on the table is the report that was put out several weeks ago, but it is an ongoing process. It is a contentious process. You know, when you say mandate relief, 
The answer sounds simple. These are mandates. They were imposed from above. They must be bad. They must be destructive. Just terminate them. That's not really how it works. Uh, you know, one person's mandates uh, are another person's good ideas, right? So uh, we should do away with mandates. Well, what's a mandate? <clears throat> Special education. How we serve children who are disabled or who, how they need uh, or who need extra help. Well, let's stop doing that. It's not that easy. So um, it's an ongoing process. We put out the first report. Uh, Larry Schwartz heads the group. There are going to be continued meetings, continued discussions, uh, and hopefully we make more progress. Increasing or suspending Triborough, is that at all a possibility this year? Uh, that is not a proposal that we have in the budget at this time. You said that there are some questions about Medicaid and education, and in your remarks since, you seem to indicate that what you have proposed is what you want to see. How much are you willing to give in these negotiations? How close are you to everybody being on the same page in terms of those issues? Well, look, this is what uh, we were chatting about inside. <clears throat> the, we have significant issues in education. We have significant issues in Medicaid we have significant issues around prison closings. You could say these are significant issues on the major issues in the budget. Um, and then it's glass half full, glass half empty. Are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist? I was holding on to Senator Sampson's suit just to make sure he didn't go down the pessimistic track while he was speaking, uh, which I told him I would. You know, it's a... Uh, uh, there are significant issues on major pieces of the budget. Um, speaker's point, we'll work through it one by one. We're developing momentum. We have a positive attitude, and we believe we can get there. And are people flexible and here in good faith? Yes. Speaker's line yesterday was a good one. There were no lines in the sand. The senator, um, both senators, both assembly leaders, said they're here in good faith. I know they're cooperative. I can tell from the amount of progress we've already made that everyone is working cooperatively. So I am optimistic. Again, one way or the other, from my point of view, you know, a governor is in a slightly different position than the leaders. I don't have members in a conference. I have just the people of the state of New York. So I don't have to make members happy going through this process. I just have to get the best budget passed for the people of the state of New York. The leaders want to do that also, but they have in some ways an additional burden, which is they have to deal with members. I don't. I just need to get a budget passed for the people of the state. And I'm going to get the best budget passed for the people of the state. I believe, and I'm optimistic, that we can do it amicably by April 1. However, in any event, my job is to get the best budget for the people of the state. And we are all working in good faith and very hard, I might add. Staff people in the back of the room who look a little more tired and haggard than usual, because they are. They're working every night, uh, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, to work through these issues. So, Governor, aren't the people in the conference the part of the people of New York State? Yes. That's why I'm here trying to help them also. Yes, I want them happy also. I want everybody happy. I want everybody happy. Has there been any, there been any consideration of a, uh, including the UB 2020 bill or some form of it in the budget that would cover all the SUNY university centers at this point? Not that it's current at this time. Governor, do you think, given the allegations, uh, I'm sorry, Bill. Anyone doing the time? No, not you. Not you. You can stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I am optimistic that UB 2020 uh, and perhaps empowerment of some of the other campuses can be in the budget and should be in the budget. I think we are working on uh, some of the pieces like procurement. Um, I think we're fairly close uh, to an agreement uh, as to that piece of the overall as it applies to the entire system. Governor, uh, in the budget next year, is there a continuation of the 
the kind of cuts to school districts that we're seeing now where school districts out across the state are announcing many teacher layoffs, they're doing away with sports programs, they're doing away with extracurricular activities, and things of that nature. The budgets we're doing in Medicaid and education are what we call two-year budgets. So we're closing the gap this year, and then we are reducing the rate of growth next year to a sustainable level. Medicaid was supposed to increase at 13 percent next year. That's going to be down to about 4 percent. Education was supposed to expand, uh, increase at about 13 percent next year. That will be down to about 4 percent. So it's a two-year appropriation in those areas. Um, if we didn't do that, first of all, the day after we passed this budget, we'd have a $15 billion deficit next year. We would be right back in the hole because these outrageous, uh, unsustainable rates of increase must stop. So we do that. On your other point about schools and the funding, you have to remember schools in this state have gotten tremendous increases in funding over the past decade or so. Tremendous. Double-digit increases, to be sure. Well, now we have to lay off teachers. The average reduction to a school district is 2.7 percent. 2.7 percent. You heard all the other rationales. We have reserves that are about $1.2 billion. The cut is $1.5. There's $600 million in federal unspent funds. Put all that aside. If the teachers paid the same health benefits that state employee workers would be, that's half the number. When they say, well, we're going to lay off teachers and we're going to hurt children, that's basically the threat in this discussion, right? If you cut the education budget, you're going to hurt children. That's their premise. No. I'm saying find a 2.7 percent efficiency in the education budget that has gotten double-digit increases and has gotten uh, amazing increases over the past decade. Find an efficiency. Like every other family in this state has had to find an efficiency. Like every other business in this state has had to find an efficiency. Like this state government is going to take a 10 percent reduction. 10% reduction. And we're asking the schools to take a 2.7%. Well, they're going to hurt the children. Manage the school system. Reduce the waste. Reduce the fraud. Reduce the abuse. Well, we don't have any. I don't believe it. I was the Attorney General for four years. I investigated school districts. I investigated double dipping. I investigated pensions. I investigated procurement contracts. I know there's waste and abuse in school districts. And I know this 2.7 percent. They'd have to say, we're perfectly managed. We are the Swiss watch of organizations. You can't find 2.7 percent waste or body fat in this organization. No. It's a threat. It's a game. It's a game. They want to oppose the cuts politically, so what do they say? I'm going to hurt your child. Your child won't get an education. This is not about a teacher in a classroom. This is about less bureaucracy, less administrative overhead, less superintendent salaries, less high salaries for administrators, more efficiency in transportation, more efficiency in back office, more efficiency in payroll. That's what this is about. This is about recognizing the new economic reality that government is responsible for management just like everyone else. And just like every family has to manage their finances, so does government. And the days where government can just throw money at the problem and raise more taxes and throw more money at the problem, those days are over. Those days are over. Because you keep raising taxes on New Yorkers, we will be here alone in this room. Wouldn't be so bad if we were here and some of the reporters weren't. <laughs> there will be an exodus, and that's what has to stop. Thank you all very much for Governor, having us today. Speak. Mayor, Governor, Mayor Bloomberg yesterday took a shot at uh, the city of Buffalo. I'm just curious. I'm sure you've seen the comments. What's your reaction to it? What's your I thought? believe uh, Mayor Bloomberg apologized for it. Uh, I'm sure Mayor Brown will accept it. We're one state at the end of the day. We work together, uh, and both mayors will work together. Thank, Thank you, guys.